going on guys so i want to um adjust my tcr velocity make it hit like 40 joules or so um i'm gonna use it on the hpa uh i'm gonna be using 3.6 gram nylon balls and i guess when i get to like 500 or 475 or 450 I'll switch off from the HPA and then I'll move on to my CO2 because I usually get better results with the CO2 and um, there's a empty CO2 cartridge in here because if I don't put it in there <clears throat> it'll just blow all the air out the front this is already aired up and um, from the last time I used it I turned up the velocity um, twice and there's just a little screw down here and you use a 3 16 allen key and you turn it um like you stick the allen key in here and you turn it up so stick it in turn it up to um turn up the velocity so i'm gonna get all this ready i'm gonna throw this in my backpack and uh shoot the box and use my chronograph <clears throat> all right you guys so this is all aired up this is the uh tcr barrel i forgot to mention if you haven't seen my channel um I installed a Tipex remote line adapter in here and had to use a, some eighth inch brass pipe and kind of dremel out the housing in the back to make this fit correctly. But it, it is possible to do. Um, my my TCR is out of warranty. Uh, it has been for, if it was a one year warranty, which I think it was, it's been out of warranty for like a year and a half now. So uh, that's kind of why I did this. 420 420 418 424 so I'm going to um turn off the air really quick all right so a couple balls fell out of the front of the breech I have an aftermarket breech in this installed also it accepts uh shaped projectiles so I, since I mostly shoot round ball out of this, um, I turned off the gas. So this is just the leftover pressure uh, that's in the line and inside the uh, marker itself. So it will keep going down lower and lower because I'm running out of gas. Good thing I'm on dirt. So um, I have an aftermarket breach in this and um so i have an aftermarket breach in here uh and i uh, i don't know if i can get it so i i got some shaped rounds from mcs uh the devastators they have like a uh, steel ball bearing and they have uh, red fins on the back of the steel ball bearing so you can see that like shaped thing in there if you have a stock TCR, it's um, it's round, so it only fits round projectiles. This is the uh, this the factory one. See how that's a circle. So the factory one, you can only put shaped balls in it. You can get this breech for like thirty bucks, but um, in my experience with shaped ammo and these magazines. Um, sometimes they tend to flip so I can get like two or three shots to work correctly and then and then the, the round will flip and then it'll jam so if you're depending on this in some sort of critical emergency situation I would stay away from shaped ammo um, I'm gonna keep this in here for now but eventually I'm probably gonna take it out and put it like in my tip X or something and then put this breech back in there because I mainly shoot round ball most of the time anyways um, and the only thing I've come across that works very well with uh, shaped ammunition is uh, the HDR-68 because of the, the drum magazine that it has. Anyways, I, turned, I took out all the air out of this. I turned this up one turn. Um, you should only adjust it when it's completely depressurized. And here's my empty CO2 I told you was in here. So um, I'm going to use this again, shoot a couple rounds, see what kind of readings I get. And uh, 420, I think I was hitting 420. So I'm hitting like 30 joules right now on HPA. Um, typically when I, when I run CO2, I get 
a lot higher um, readings. So I just turned it up one more time. And uh, you can't really turn up that much at, a, at once. You can't just like do a full complete turn because there's like a little tiny gap of a little window you have to work with. So yeah, I'm gonna refill all this, all these magazines and uh, start shooting again. All right, <clears throat> this tank is, the air tank is just above a thousand. So uh, I might run out of air pretty soon, but I have my CO2 tank. All right, so I'm still using nylon balls. 3.6 gram nylon balls and uh, HPA tank 426 418 422 so at some point at least for my TCR there's a, a point where increasing the velocity doesn't do anything um, with my HPA tank so I'm going to actually switch out the CO2 tank because I turned it up twice and I'm still getting the same uh, speeds. So yeah, I'm going to switch out tanks and I'll be right back. All right, you guys, I'm just going to um, shoot all the air out of this still. Um, so I turn off the valve to the air tank so there's no more air getting pushed into the marker. I just need to like degas this. So these are just uh, whatever's left in this marker, the pressure. 424, 370, 316, 282, 234, 182. It's probably gonna run out right now. So yeah, out of gas, uh, out of rounds, and I'm gonna switch out tanks, I'll be right back. So here's my HPA tank. It still has like 1400 or 1500 uh, PSI left and uh, here's my co2 tank and I'm gonna connect this and uh, be right back All right, we're pressurized. Um, I have my nylon balls in here again So on the HPA tank with this weight of a ball, I was hitting like 420 424 418 pretty much 30 joules. I haven't messed with the velocity so typically I get like a 30 feet per second bump so I'm going to be hitting somewhere in here, I, I'm assuming. It could be higher, but I'm going to assume uh, maybe like 460. All right, you guys, CO2 tank, nylon balls, same velocity, uh, just on CO2 now. 534. So I'm going to actually check what this is and then turn it down because the last time I was hitting this high, I had issues. Uh, so that was like 47 joules probably so I'll be right back all right turn off my gas tank um I'm gonna degas this basically with whatever's left in this uh marker 536 that's still like 47 joules or something 500 and this is going down lower because I turned off the gas 484 462, 440, I'm going to check my uh, magazine. All right, I think I have like seven more rounds, but I don't know if, uh, if the gas will last. 404, 366, 332, 298, 252. So gas is out. I'm going to turn this down. Um, and I'll explain why in a second. <clears throat> All right, you guys, I turned it down twice. So I stuck this Allen key in here and then made sure it fit in this uh, adjuster um, nut right here and then went down. So when it's facing left, when the, when the barrel's facing left, if you go up with the Allen key, it turns it up. And if you go down with the Allen key, You'll turn it down. Um, the reason I'm turning it down is because I want it to hit like 40 joules and not 47 and uh, minimize um, problems that may arise if it's like has too much pressure going through it because I have had the o-ring blow off on the valve before and um, it's easy to fix I just don't want it stuff to break because it is an expensive marker. Um, it's not the most powerful one but I bought this uh, two years ago now two years and two months 
before I knew as much as I do now, as much as I do know now about less lethal um, companies and different products that are out there, like the huge variety of stuff that's basically come out since 2022. And, um, and like all the mods and all this stuff you can do. I didn't really know any of that back, back then, but now I know a lot more. So yeah, this was expensive. Uh, I don't want to break it. And, um, <clears throat> I, I can buy parts to fix it or whatever. There's just certain stuff you can't buy. Um, like if this butt stock breaks, I'm screwed. I had to send it in the Taberna. Uh, I don't think I can buy the Picatinny rail on the other side. Um, it's hard to find the body, this, these two clamshell pieces. It's pretty hard to find that. It's kind of hard to find this front piece. There's certain parts on it that you can replace easily and certain parts on it that you cannot replace easily. Um, so yeah, I turn it down twice. I'm gonna re-air it, put um, rounds through it and see where I'm at. <clears throat> All right, you guys, so my goal is to get this on these ammo to hit like 500 feet per second or like 490, somewhere around there. So I'm back to air it up. I turned it down twice and I'm using CO2 still and I'm still using 3.6 gram nylon balls. 520, so it's still a little bit too high for me. 518, so yeah, I'm gonna um, turn off the gas and shoot all the rest of these rounds out. All right, gas is off. I'm just gonna waste these uh, ammos. 520. 486, 472, 444, 420, and uh, I think I'm out of rounds. Yeah, so I'm just dry firing this. If I was using a 12 gram cartridge, uh, these speeds would not stay consistent. They would just drop pretty, pretty big after the first shot. You'll have like a... Uh, I don't know, like a 30 feet per second drop or more each shot because you're limited um, by that little 12 gram cartridge. And um, so yeah, right now I'm just uh, turning this down. I'll do one turn. So I turn it down once and I'm gonna air it back up and see what happens. All right guys, <clears throat> trying to get 500. Still trying to get 500. 526 <laughs> so I turned it down but it's still going up 508 but you also have to kind of shoot it a little bit for it to like adjust itself 508 so this is pretty much where I want it I might turn it down a little bit more 506 because yeah I want to minimize uh, damage and uh, damage to this marker and increase its reliability because I don't want um, if I need to actually use this <clears throat> I don't want it to be worn out and seals all screwed up and then I actually need to use it and then it freaking pops on me or something so I'll be right back <clears throat> all right you guys I have aluminum balls loaded up in here 7.2 grams which is this column in the middle of the screen and I'm assuming it's gonna hit 350 or like 330 at least so I'll see what this does and I'm back on CO2 just like before um, everything else is the same except for the ammo Jesus 398 386 so this is still hitting really really hard um, 7.2 grams 400 is 53 so uh, the nylon balls everything's different because the ammo plays a big factor in uh, speeds and stuff I'll do a couple more shots just to see if it adjusts itself 394 so yeah it's still hitting pretty pretty damn hard more than I want it to be 384 so I'm gonna um, ungas this all right, you guys, I turned it down twice. I'm still using aluminum balls. I'm still using the CO2 tank. And uh, I might be running out of daylight soon, so I might have to do this another day. Some more adjusting. 238, so I put too much. 236. So this is like 
I don't know, 22 joules. So I turned it down too much. It's kind of hard to um, to gauge how much to turn it down, how much to turn it up. So you just got to keep shooting it. I think I'm out of rounds. All right, you guys, last adjustment, uh, running out of daylight. So I turned it up one turn and I'll see what it does. 248. 244. So this is actually like, um, I looked at my paper and uh, this is like 18 or 19 joules. So I'm going to have to mess with this. All right, so I degassed it. I turned it up one turn, so I don't know what it's gonna hit at, because it's, yeah, I'll see what this does. But I'm trying to get like 340, 350 with these uh, 7.2 gram aluminum balls. Ooh, all right, 334, this is kind of where I want it. 294, that's not where I want it. 286, We're getting closer, so I'll probably turn it up like half a turn or like a quarter turn, 290, but I'll do that on a different day because I'm running out of daylight. 286, 282, 282. Um, I'm gonna check my magazine. So one other thing is this tank it's either this feels cold, so this may be cold on the inside, and pressure's going lower. Um, it still feels pretty heavy. Like I'm pretty sure this probably has 200 or 300 grams of CO2 in it, and the capacity is around 550. Um, it rarely gets filled that high. It usually gets like 450 grams of CO2 in it. So I'm sure this is still half full. So it should have adequate pressure. It's just because this is getting cold. It could be um, kind of uh, making it go slower, and I've shot it a lot. But the, that one shot at like three, three thirty-four or whatever, seven point two gram ball. That one shot at three thirty-four is around thirty-six probably. So I'm pretty close. So I'm I'm probably just gonna. Um, uh, there's nothing in this right now. I'm just gonna degas this really quick. All right, yeah, I checked out the breach. There's nothing in there, but I'll still shoot it toward the ground. So yeah, um, it's pretty close to where I want it. I need to adjust that velocity thing, uh, probably just like one more time, like a half a turn. And uh, I guess I could show you guys. So inside of that screw there's a smaller um, hole and you can put an allen key in there and press in there and it'll degas so there's a little bit of pressure in here still the only other thing you can do is uh, pull this but you do run the risk of the valve seal that plugs up against the co2 cartridge it could come off so I'd rather do it this way because I've already shot it as much as I can to get the gas out, but there's still a little bit of gas in here and there's no way to degas it, uh, like on the Umarex um, pistols or on the HDB. So I have the Allen key inside that, inside of the uh, hole, inside that screw. So this is a really small Allen key and I'm gonna press down on it. And I just let the rest of the gas out and then I can safely, you know, take this off. If I didn't do it that way, I could still do this you know, pull this this thing open <clears throat> but I have had on the tip X randomly uh, I had the um, the seal the puncture seal I had it um, like come out and then the seal was like around this but since I know how to take these things apart and fix them or whatever it wasn't that big of an issue uh, for me but um, it's not hard to fix you just have to know what you're doing so that little rubber seal in there, it's kind of like a golden brown color. That thing can get uh, 
stuck around the top of the CO2 cartridge and you do not want that to happen. Uh, you either have to send it in to burner to get fixed or fix it yourself. And um, like a part like that, the, the, the washer, it's like two bucks. So if you know how to do it, if you know how to fix these things, you could do it for two dollars. But if you're out of warranty and you send it to Berna, um, I think they charge you 75 bucks. But that covers like shipping and stuff. But you're paying $75 for a, a $2 uh, fix. And they don't sell parts because uh, I've already contacted them about fixing my SD. And I essentially need like a part that's at most like 20 bucks. Probably more realistically like $10. And uh, they don't sell parts, so they told me um, I had to send it in for $75 for the SD. It might not be the same for the TCR, but at least for the SD, 75 bucks. They pay for shipping. Well, it's kind of included with that price. They pay for shipping. They send you a return label, and uh, I just I don't want to bother with it because it's it's a very underpowered marker, and uh, I'd rather just basically buy something new or get a get this valve for my tipex and throw that tipex um throw it in the tipex buy a 70 dollar upgrade for that pistol instead of buying a 75 dollar uh repair service for a like 12 joule marker and i didn't buy it it was a gift so i, I still have to ask my brother what's what he wants me to do with that thing um because yeah i'll either use it I'll either use it for parts because I have uh, a couple brothers that have the SD also and I can use it for parts to fix theirs if that same part doesn't break but they don't use it as much as I do I only use it so much because I make videos and stuff but um yeah either use it for parts um, <clears throat> or um, make stupid sh shorts about what you can do with the broken burnet SD because I have a lot more ideas those are just kind of stuff off the top of my head, but um, yeah, uh, this right now is hitting with this with the 7.2 gram ball, uh, almost 30 joules. But I mean, you guys saw it hit like 53. Uh, yeah, pretty much 53, 52 when it was hitting like 390 or 400. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty reliable, other than when you push it too much, because when I I've only had this O-ring pop off when I had it hitting really hard like that speed, like 400 or like 410 or something with the 7.2 round balls. That's when I had a problem with the O-ring popping off. But if you just use it kind of in a more conservative like 40 joules, or 35 joules, you should be good. It, it'll last a while. You just have to keep putting oil, keep putting grease. And uh, yeah, like this thing's been running nice <clears throat> um, ever since I installed this thing and even before I just had some pretty common problems that everyone has where uh, you put a co2 card in here a brand new one and you push the door in and it pops instantly or uh, you pull the trigger and it doesn't pop at all like the co2 doesn't puncture so you just have to mess with this this is just a, uh, a little guide that pushes the co2 closer or brings it out some so if you close the door and it punctures instantly, you have to turn this counterclockwise. And if you put a CO2 in here and you push it and you pull the trigger and it doesn't do anything, like it doesn't puncture, then you have to tighten this down by turning it clockwise. And then you'll, you'll get a feel for it. But once you have it set for a certain brand of CO2, you should be good. But anyways, guys, this one's getting kind of long, so I'll cut it right here. Have a good one and stay safe.